Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Science of Superpowers. Really excited to have you here today. We have with us a wonderful guest, Dimitri Moriaitis from Spiritual Arts. We're going to be talking all about the connection of spiritual arts and superpowers. Are they the same? Are they different? What are we talking about? But before we dive too deeply into that, Dimitri, would you like to say hello to everyone? Oh, hello. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I, my name is Dimitri Moraitis. I'm a spiritual teacher, author, and co-founder of Spiritual Arts Institute, where we help souls grow. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, we're going to get to hear all about that here, and we're going to kick it off with talking about, like I said, this idea of spiritual arts and superpowers. Um, are they the same thing? Are they different? What can they do for us, right? And and is it is it a worthwhile exploration? Which clearly, you know, we're both sitting here saying that we've dedicated our existence to <laughs> to being in this conversation, and so we deem it worthwhile. But why? You know, what can it do for people? So we're going to be talking some about that today. But first, Dimitri, what are your superpowers and how do you use them for good? Well, my main thing now in life is a teacher. I started younger thinking art was going to be my my passion in life. And, uh, you know, I'm a classical pianist and I started in film. But when I had my spiritual awakening, it was so strong. I realized, oh, this is my purpose. This is this is my personal path, but also this is what I'm meant to do to help mm -hmm. others. So I've been Beautiful. on that for over 40 years now. Yeah. Fabulous. And I like you have a little bit of a different twist to your story than I have. You were trained in met metaphysics by Barbara Martin, right. who's uh, one of the co-founders of the Institute there with you. Um, what what is that like to 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 sort of have this awakening to know this is your path and then to find somebody who can guide you along that path oh, and and I I'd imagine play that bounce back you know have the um, similar vernacular right be able to train in in a particular modality what was that like for you? Oh, that was everything. I I, I tell people I could have read every single metaphysical book in the world and not gotten what I got from Barba. It's a, actually a very ancient tradition. They. <clears throat> used to call it the oral tradition. It was teacher, student, guru, chela, however you would want to word it. <clears throat> um, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't just discussion. It was energetic exchange. And when I had my awakening, I didn't even know what metaphysics was, mm -hmm. right? But some said, oh, you've had a religious experience. And I said, well, it didn't feel quite like that. And when I heard the word metaphysics, then I understood what that meant. Right. And I was searching, and thank God, a year, only within a year of that, I, I went to a dinner party, and there was Barbara, and it was the first time I meditated, and it was a very profound experience, it was like an ancient door opening up again, and then afterwards, she's a very uh, easy person to talk to, you know, some people think, oh my God, you can see my aura, she's going to be a scary person to, to, to interact <laughs> with, you know, <laughs> and she's very down to earth, you know, and she started talk had so many questions, right, so I'm just pouring out of me. And I'm realizing, you know, she's she's saying this from her own experience. Her answers are coming from her own experiences. It's not something she read or was trained in. And she's helped me to understand and orient myself in what I was experiencing. And by the end of the evening, I said, she's my teacher. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we started right away. I didn't realize, you know, we both love to write, but I was writing in more of the arts. You know, she said, no, let's start writing spiritual. And uh, she gave also the great advice there. I said, well, I've never done anything like that before. And she said, just start, you know, you're mm -hmm. talking about powers and talents. Sometimes people have things, but they don't try it. You know, it's like, well, you can do this. Just do it. <laughs> don't right. analyze it. You know, just try it out and see how it goes. And it started a beautiful uh, relationship, um, you know, in both training and metaphysics, but also in writing. But I didn't realize as time went on, she was also training me to be a teacher. And that was also a big surprise. Um, mm -hmm. and when that kind of happened, it did in the end feel natural. But, uh, you know, I know some of these things sound a little, you know, we've heard it over and over, but follow your bliss. It really does mean that because I hadn't gone from Chicago to L.A. to go to 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 film and movies. I never would have met Barbara. And then from mm -hmm. the start, it wouldn't have led to teaching. You know, you've got to kind of follow where you're heart is really taking you even if people don't always understand what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, because it really in the end maybe that won't be the final destination but it'll take you to the next step in the road 
That's so beautiful. And I think that if we talk about, you know, really the intersection between the conversations of spiritual arts and superpowers, and mind you, I hold them as, as, as one and the same. I think depending on what traditions we come from, depending on what filters we look through and what experiences we've had, what lived experiences we've had, what work experiences we've had in this world, um, it, it can flavor them different ways, right? We hear about them as being, you know, in, in psychology, you know, being being genius or, or gifted. Um, in in other sections, it, it they take on their own name, but at the heart of it is our is what you just spoke to our willingness to continue to unfold, um, to continue to become more and more holy who we are, and to expand that wholeness to include things that our previous purview wasn't going to allow us to see, and trusting in that journey to some degree, whether you're trusting some entity, some some element, some. Um, some awareness beyond yourself. I mean, metaphysics, I think, often gets a bad rap. And it's kind of interestingly named because it simply means beyond physics. But what right. we're discovering now is that perhaps our physics container was a little bit limited, that there were physics beyond physics that we weren't really aware of at the time that the, um, at the, the uh, study of physics really came about. And we're having to revamp that now because what we study scholastically, we use to inform our realities and despite debunking Newtonian physics decades ago, we still, most of us, build lifestyles around us that require some stabilization from the physical reality. And what we learned during the pandemic is that's not always the best foundation, right? Things start to move and flow. And the more comfortable you get in that abstract and those conversations, such as spiritual arts, superpowers, um, those types of things, the better equipped you are for the versatility that the world throws to us, right? And so to me, that's a really big part of the intersection between those, but they are held differently. And, and to your point, you had an awakening and people were saying, oh, it was a religious experience. And you're like, ah, you know, that's not how I would categorize it. And depending on what connotations we have for those various um, experiences, we map it differently and everybody maps it differently. And so I think that there's value in allowing for sameness as well as a whole lot of difference when we talk about these things. So, so you and Barbara have the Spiritual Arts Institute and you work with individuals both in a healing capacity as well as learning to be their own teachers and teachers of others. And so, so talk to me a little bit about how you hold the concept of spiritual arts. If someone's saying, hey, why should I do this with you? Yeah. Um, what is this spiritual arts thing all about? How do you describe it? Well, let me go back. You brought up some really important points about metaphysics, right? It, it, it's, it goes back to the ancient days. Aristotle was the first one that sort of coined the phrase, meaning after the physical. And this implies that the physical world is not the whole world, right? It's not the, the East Indians used the word Maya, the world of illusion. They didn't mean that the physical world is illusory. Obviously, it's not, right? But when we look at the physical world through only the lens of the five physical senses and say, that's the worldview, that's all there is, we're just a bunch of atoms bouncing around the universe, that is an illusion. That is not what is the truth. And what is the truth is we're not even a physical being to begin with. We are, as Teilhard de Chardin, we're not physical, Teilhard de Chardin said, we're not physical beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And this means that the core, the soul, the essence of who we actually are is completely non-physical. It is going to exist long after this body shucks its mortal coil. It existed long before we even had a physical form, before we were born on this earth. And what you're trying to do is get in touch with it because all the power, all the all the things that you do emanates from that. One of the foundations of our work with the aura is for something to show up in your life, the energy of that has to first show up in your aura. Change your aura, change your life. That's one of the, then what's one of the spiritual laws? And if it's not in your aura, you have to just generate it. You just have to work to make it happen. So don't complain when you don't see the world your, or your life the way you want it. And you say, oh, oh, that person's got it so easy. They've got everything there. Well, use them as an example and say, okay, if I want more of this in my life, they're a good example. I look up to them a little bit. I'm going to bring it out in my own way. The heart center in our work with the aura is the world affairs. It's the things we put out into life. And many times people will have some good energy flows moving out of the hermetic but their life isn't quite 
displaying that. And sometimes it's also because they're not trying hard enough. You know, they give up too quickly. Oh, the first sign of adversity. I guess I wasn't meant to do that. Well, you need to try a lot more. <laughs> if you're aiming for this mark, it ain't going to just happen in two weeks. So you've got to give it, you know, a long, long time or as long as it needs to make it happen. So our work is to try to get in touch with that inner part of you. And meditation and prayer are the two foundational keys to start that. But it's not that alone. You can't just meditate on a mountaintop and think you're going to find enlightenment. Yes, you want to meditate, and we recommend daily, but you want to meditate and apply. So, for example, I'll just give a very quick prick. We had an example. We had a doctor in the classes, and uh, he said, you know, I'll be very honest with myself. I'm not very compassionate with my patients. It was a medical practice, and uh, it's kind of in and out. I see him real quick, and then I'm out there. And he realized he wasn't really, you know, doing enough for them. So, in the aura, the energy of compassion comes through in this beautiful pink energy, the love ray. So he had to work with that. Well, he did, but it's not just working with it. He had to actually, you know, <laughs> talk to his patients as their people, not petri dishes, right? <laughs> and he did. And not only did you know his bedside manner and the way people, you know, patients love them, his practice got even busier because he brought that power. He recognized there was something he had to work on, but then he went through the process of bringing that compassion. So you could say that's a superpower in the sense that you have to bring it forth. The potential of it was there. If you realize something is lacking, just work. Same with prosperity. Prosperity starts as a consciousness. It's not how much money you have in your pocket. And it shows up in the aura as this turquoise ray. When I was in the film biz many years ago, I'm not in it anymore. You know, it's a little bit of a feast or famine business. You're either working like crazy or you're not working at all. And I was in that not working mode, but I was, you know, searching. I was trying to. Uh, and then Barbara, again, this is in the early days of working with her in her casual way. She looked at the heart center and said, oh, I see this beautiful turquoise light coming out of you. Now, at that moment, nothing had manifested, but it was building in the aura. Literally two weeks later, I got the most lucrative offer in the film biz. I'd gotten up to that point. So the energy was there, not by some magic wand, but through the efforts I was doing, it just, you know, sometimes took a little longer to, to actually outwardly manifest. Beautiful. And I, I love that you just brought all of that up because it speaks to another intersection between spiritual arts and superpowers. And it's the awareness that we are first and foremost energetic systems. And when you understand that, um, and you you can work with it a little bit better. In our in our in our world, we consider it human programming and understanding where all those subconscious programs come in, how to reprogram yourself, what the, what effects trauma has on the system, um, mm -hmm. and all of those elements. And so that's another area where if you if you're able to see yourself metaphysically, you know, beyond the physical, however you define that, whatever your practice or traditions allow for. Um, it starts you in the sensitization to yourself as beyond the physical. Um, and it gives a lot more allowance for the environment to be beyond the physical, for others to be beyond the physical. And, and we learn to sort of soften our approaches a little bit more, similar to your story about the doctor with his bedside manner. And, and we and we have um, a, a natural empathy that energetically starts to develop, right? We do work with people with empathy as a superpower because some are more predisposed to that than others. And it's important to understand that that it comes with its own challenges when you're a true empath. And so opening up to that and knowing how to move through the world in accordance with your energetics and, and your particular mix is different than anybody else's particular mix. And so, so when you start on these journeys into your, your spiritual energy using the spiritual arts or into human programming using the superpower uh, vernacular and modalities, you start to realize yourself as much more than 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 how a lot of us were were programmed to see ourselves and how a lot of society shapes itself around us and that level of awareness sort of starts to feel like this um secret code you know of people who kind of get it who can feel it who can sense it and you start to see it in others right right barbara coming up to you and saying i can see this in you 
right? Being a part of groups and organizations where people are willing to share those reflections and people are able to receive those reflections. So we're reminded that we're beyond the physical and that that, that can be reflected back to us as well. So that's another area that they're very similar. The vernacular is different. The modalities are different. You know, how we go about it in your world, you talked about meditation and prayer. We have prayer, meditation, contemplation, and stillness in our space. Um, but the but the parallels of the journeys are are very important to make note of. You know, we've interviewed thousands of people now on the Superpower Network about their journey of awakening, their journey into awareness and evolution. And at the heart of it is this sensitization that naturally we become more sensitized to self, to aspects of ourself, and to others. And it and it starts to create this vision of a humanity moving forward that really is capable of making um, decisions on behalf of all of us, right? We're able to see beyond some of the competition and some of the conflict as it's previously been described to us. And I think that that's a, that's a real question on my heart is that if we can accept that a lot of these modalities are very similar with their differences, can we start to draw a picture of a shared vision of what it looks like to move forward as a humanity where more of us are sensitized to these things. Do you all talk about that in your world, about not just the impact on the individual or on their um, initial sphere of influence, but what this means as a humanity, oh, as yeah. more and more of us are willing to work with this, these energy and these energetic components? Oh, very much so. Um, Barbara has been talking about from the day I met her, you know, we're, we're at, we're at the, um, you know, we're at a turning, we're at the beginning of a spiritual renaissance. And there's never been a better time to grow spiritually than today, because you now have millions of people that are basically waking up. It's not happening in one part of the world. It's not happening by one person, you know, led by one person. It seems to be like this grass that's just suddenly growing all over the planet. And that's part of the collective evolution. There's a individual evolution of humanity, each of us individually, but there's a collective evolution as well. And one of the things that, we, uh, and, you know, our inspiration gets constantly is the world is not getting worse, it's getting better. And yes, there are big problems. But again, Barbara described it so beautiful when you're kind of in these end of days when the old is finally starting to drop away. Think of it like a wound, you know, it gets all infected and everything what you have to do is you have to lance it and the pus has to come out and then you can dress it well we're a little bit in that pus releasing stage right now where we're going to see some ugly stuff in the world right now it was kind of already going on but it's going to be so much more visible don't get shaken by that and don't get discouraged by that because you want those opportunities you know there was a time when the mystical tradition was an honored part of society if you join, let's say, one of the ancient mystery schools of Greece, it was like saying you became a Navy SEAL, you know, like you became the elite of the elite. We are not exactly in that age right now, but it's starting to reemerge again. And these ancient traditions, because quite frankly, a conversation like this 150 years ago would be happening in a mystery school, an ashram or a secret society. That's you would right. not be talking about it just as easily and openly on a public platform. So, so now we're just starting to talk to each other the different traditions that didn't even communicate quite that much in the past are starting to say, oh, let's look at how we're alike rather than how we're different. Mm -hmm. And realizing, as Blavatsky would say, you know, there's no religion higher than truth, right? Mm -hmm. So so we're realizing, okay, these, these different metaphysical and religious and mystical traditions, yes, they're approaching things from a different culture and a different time period when they developed, but essentially they're looking at the same jewel just from a different facet. And they all have different things they're offering. Um, it's not one or the other, you know. And I think one of the big things is now this reconciliation between the traditions of the Eastern philosophies and the Western. The monotheistic emphasizes God. The Eastern emphasizes ultimate reality, right? The Brahman, Nirvana, returning to the Tao. And these are not exclusive of each other. These are part of one grand plan. And that is what we feel is going to be one of the big revelations is how god and infinite re you know infinite reality are part of the same process and Beautiful. we're part of that 
Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that synthesis. And folks, if what Dimitri is talking about really is lighting you up right now, make sure you get over to spiritualarts.org and check out what he and Barbara and the team are doing over there. Um, they've got classes for you. If you're interested in becoming certified as a teacher, you can look into that. Um, and their programs that come from that space of those spiritual arts. If you like the human programming side of things, the superpower things, or, or a little bit of both, right? You can go over to superpowerexperts.com click on the courses tab. You can download our Master Your Personal Power 101 for free. That's our offering to you. And you can also get those energetic sensitization classes there as well to learn the steps so you can have that fulfillment of wholeness, greater peace, right? Start playing with your own expansion. There's no easy pill. You can take the red pill, folks, but that just starts you <laughs> down the rabbit hole, right? Like you should really be the fine print on these things because this is a lifelong journey, right? Lifetimes journeys uh, of this work and, and it's an unfoldment and it, but it, but it guides us to that place where we can appreciate the journey, Right. And that and, and seeing it as this journey that that is this never ending, like always changing sort of world that that really I think you talked about, Dimitri, how, um, you know, there's a readiness. And, and I've been saying that as well, that we've never seen before, at least in recent memory. Right. Um, right. And I think that the pandemic really catalyzed a lot of development and growth across spectrums, um, different levels of awareness. But it. it you know, all ships rise in this model, right? As each one of us comes into greater understanding, we all benefit from it. And so when you light up and encourage others to be lit up, we're much more creative. We're much more co-creative. We're, we're, we're just nicer people. We're happier people. Like it really is kind of a magical um, formula, yeah. but the, 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 the work in it is to allow yourself to be that, right? Dimitri, taking us back to something you said early on, and that's it. It's not necessarily going to happen overnight, right? The world you see in front of you is based on what you used to believe. You got to give that physical reality time to catch up to your change in beliefs. And we're changing rapidly. And so a lot of us feel like we're in a bit of a swirl, right? I haven't talked to very many people who haven't asked themselves at one point or the other in the last few years, if they're crazy. And it's okay to ask yourself that, right? It's okay to look around and go, hey, how about you? Like, is your reality shifting in front of you? Like, like what's going on here, right? What are we really talking about? Because the more we're willing to talk about it and find these similarities and come to common ground, we realize we're not that different. We have different maps of our consciousness, different ways of looking at things, whole different realities sometimes. But the similarities are there too. And so, Dimitri, as we wrap up today, why don't you um, offer some advice to folks who are who are wanting to take that next step, whatever it is for them and their own expansion. We mentioned prayer, meditation. What else can you offer in terms of things people can do today that start to open themselves up in a bigger way to experience this kind of fulfillment we're talking about? Yeah, well, I would say, and probably most of your viewers or listeners, they're listening because they had some type of quickening or awakening. And we would just encourage you, that's not accidental. That's the divine knocking on your door. So. Do everything you can to make your spiritual growth, your spiritual awakening, your spiritual empowerment a greater part of your life. And all parts of your life will be blessed. Everything is part of the spiritual, not just that which is labeled <laughs> spiritual. Your career, your finances, your relationships, it's all part of that journey. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and and come together. There is something magical, you know, regardless of your tradition, where two or more of us gather in light and love and appreciation of each other, magical things occur. There is an element that a co-creative force that exists between oh, yeah. us that just has to be accessed, right? And it's accessed through things like light and love and knowing yourself and your wholeness and being willing to accept others in their wholeness and, and, and seeing what you can do when you come together to co-create um, something really magical happens in that space. And, and as we look forward to, you know, coming out of the holidays, whenever you're listening to this, just remember like that's true in your interpersonal relationships. It's true in your families. It's true with your spouses, your partners, your children. Um, and it's true with every single person that you come into contact with. You get to say how the world receives you by what you transmit to it. And that, you know, sometimes it feels easier than others. I get that. Um, but it does respond to us, right? The world and others in it respond to us and the energy that we're putting forward. And so it's worth it to go through these practices and turn around and look at the things that you're not so great, you know, fond of that you, that you don't think are so great about you and be willing to sit with those 
and get guidance from a teacher, get guidance from somebody you resonate with um, as you as you do that process so that you can come out the other side really understanding self, right? Not shoving those dark pieces further down, but but bringing them to the light and saying, hey, you know what? This is who I am. And really truly being able to embrace that. Dimitri, thank you so much for being here today, folks. Make sure you get over to spiritualarts.org um, and check out what Dimitri and Barbara and the whole team over there are up to. Any last minute pointers you want to give Dimitri before we sign off? Um, well, I think you've said a lot yourself, and we had a great conversation. Um, yes, it's individual, but like you said, it's also collective. You know, we're we're building civilization together. Uh, the The keynote of civilized living is cooperating. If we don't cooperate, there's no civilization, and we are heading to a more beautiful expression of civilization. But we're the ones that are going to have to make it happen. It's not it's not just an automatic thing. We have to weave that tapestry together. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, well, we are in support of that over here. So just know that, you know, we can come together with our Wonder Power twins and connect in and, and know that you you all have big fans at the Superpower Network. So anytime you're promoting something or want to have another chat, feel feel free to reach out to us and we'll have you back thank on the show. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for the good work you and your team are doing. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you for that. And to all of you out there, thank you for listening. We know we wouldn't have a network if it wasn't for you all. And when you share these episodes, it helps out all of our businesses and all of the work that we do. So please consider sharing this episode with someone who might feel lit up by this or who could be inspired by the information that we're sharing today. Um, folks, remember, we've been talking today all about spiritual arts and superpowers. Until next time, remember who you are. We love you. Love each other. Goodbye for now.